Okay. Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to answer some questions. If anybody has any questions, I am uh, open for discussion today. And uh, I wanted to cover a couple of things, uh, but uh, we'll wait for some people to get on here first and uh, we'll take it from there. I don't know how to see if anybody's on here. Well, they change the interface on this so often. This looks brand new. But, okay, let's see if we have any questions coming up here. I do want to cover a couple of things um, with the glucose monitor that I use. This is a Cygnos glucose monitor. I do all my tests with this. So I'll tell you a little bit about how I do my tests. So the main thing I do is I fast for about 16 hours before I do each of the tests that you see on my page. And I do that for one simple reason. I'm trying to give these uh, foods that I test in as accurate as I can kind of baseline to start off with. Uh, I know it's not exactly a, a, a scientific experiment. This is just my results with the CGM. But I try to remain consistent with that. After I eat the food, uh, I sit at my desk and I don't do any work so that physical activity does not have a bearing on the um, insulin and blood sugar um, reactions to my tests. So that's how I do my tests all the time. And uh, I have been using, I wanted to tell everybody as well too, I get this question a lot, why did I start this page? And why am I doing this? I am 52 years old now and I've eaten junk food for most of my life. My, my body weight has been up and down, up and down, up and down my whole life. I've been as high as 235 pounds. And uh, in my adult life, I've probably been as low as 189 pounds. So I fluctuate up and down from that my whole life. I have been eating junk food most of the time my whole life. And that caught up with me. And I started to get symptoms of insulin resistance, which is tired all the time, especially after eating, just low energy, lack of motivation, sometimes anxiety some neuropathy in the hands and feet that's tingling or numbness feeling in the hands and feet, some skin issues with darkening pigment in the folds of your skin. Also, I noticed that on my feet, uh, if I got like a scratch or a cut on my feet, it would take a long time to heal. And I looked all of this stuff up and I realized, hey, I'm probably insulin resistant. Um, and I thought, even if I'm not, it's probably a good time for me to start to clean up my diet and my lifestyle uh, at 52 years old. Um, it's important to know that type 2 diabetes and a lot of metabolic issues do not happen overnight. They happen over decades um, and sometimes you don't know they're coming until it's too late. So I thought with the history of type 2 diabetes in my family that I would... Um, take things into my hands, my own hands, and start to prevent this from happening. So I don't wanna get type two diabetes. That's the primary reason I started this channel. And I thought, what's the best way for me to do this is to monitor my blood sugar. If uh, I don't know what's going on with these foods that I'm eating, it's probably a good time for me to check out what is actually going on instead of guessing all the time. Uh, so I went and got a continuous glucose monitor. I didn't start with this Cygnos brand but I started with another brand and I used that for several months. Uh, and then I found Cygnos. I looked at some other brands as well too. And I really liked their interface and it was easy to understand. It's very intuitive to use and they've got great customer support. So I started using that. And I've been documenting all these foods that I ate. These are foods that I like and I wanted to test for myself and I'm gonna to continue to do them. Um, I think it's important to note that individual results will vary with this stuff. So just because I'm reacting a certain way to the foods that I'm eating, eating, that doesn't mean that you're going to react in that way. Everybody has different variables that are in play with this stuff. And there are over 50 different variables that can have an effect on your blood sugar. So I, um, you know, I, I try to give the information that is, is, relevant to people with regard to the glycemic index, which is a good way to figure out if a food is going to be problematic for your blood sugar or not. The glycemic index tells you it has a rating system. There's high, medium, and low, and it'll tell you which ones will have a high effect on your blood sugar, like white bread, sugar, things like that, all the refined stuff, rice even. So 
I try to go by that and I always say in my videos, individual results will vary. It's very important to remember that because everybody will have different results. The good thing about having a CGM like this, however, is that you can take the guesswork out. You'll know exactly what's going on with you specifically. Okay, let's get into some questions here. How do you put on the glucose monitor? Do you recommend any particular glucose monitors? Yeah, so that's a very good question. And part of the part of the my hesitancy to get a glucose monitor is I was worried that there was a needle that was sticking in my arm the whole time and that's gotta be painful, I thought to myself. But that's not the case. It comes with a little applicator and you push a little button and it puts a little filament under your skin. It's a flexible, tiny little filament. It's very difficult even to see. Um, and it doesn't hurt at all. And that filament is measuring your interstitial fluid and it's telling you what your blood sugar level is at. And that information goes to your cell phone and there's an app that they have with it. It's very easy to use. And that app shows you a graph of what's happening to your blood sugar in real time. And it really is enlightening to see what foods do what. So to answer your question, I like all continuous glucose monitors. They're all good because they all give you that information. But the one I like the best is Cygnos and I like them for a couple of reasons, or a few reasons rather. First thing is that I like the interface. The interface that you get with the app is really intuitive and easy to use. I also love their customer service. They're really good over there. And the price, the price point is good on it as well. So I use that one and as a note, in, there's a link in my bio if you're interested in it. Right now they're running a 20% off sale uh, for all my followers. And that is only good until tomorrow morning. So if you are interested in taking advantage of that, now's a good time to get it. There's a 20% off discount there. So Cygnos is the brand I use and uh, I will continue to use it. It's, it's really, I'll tell you what the most important thing that I've learned um, from this, from having this glucose monitor. Besides figuring out which foods are good for me or which foods I can tolerate rather and which foods I have problems with or that spike my blood sugar, that alone is very important information. But I think the most important thing that I've learned from having a glucose monitor is that I shouldn't be eating carbohydrates or high carbohydrates late at night before I go to bed. And I'll, I'll give you an ex example why. And you can see these videos on my, um, on my page. Uh, I've done, uh, I went to the movies one time, I had some caramel coated popcorn, I ate the entire bag, I got back from the movies at around 11.30, I went straight to bed. And I didn't realize what was going on until I woke up the next morning, I looked at my Cygnos app, and you could see I had a blood sugar spike that lasted, it was a significant spike, it went up quite a bit. And it lasted for about six hours. And I realized, wow, that's not good. It's the duration of that spike which alarmed me more than anything. So it is not good for me. And I tested this um, many other times. Uh, having pizza late at night or having high carbohydrates, especially refined carbohydrates late at night is not good for your blood sugar because you're going to bed. And you're putting yourself in a rested state so your body does not have an opportunity to burn off that glucose like it, like it would if you were walking around or active during the day. Uh, like, likewise with being sedentary. So if you eat a high carbohydrate meal, especially the refined carbs, and you sit on the couch and watch TV, blood sugar will spike uh, considerably. One of the best ways for me to bring down my blood sugar after I've eaten um, and my blood sugar is spiking, let's say I've had too many carbs, is to go for a walk. Like a brisk walk, 20 or 30 minute walk, is really, really good for your blood sugar. So. Uh, and I'll, I'll add that if I didn't have the glucose monitor, I would have never known that my blood sugar was spiking all night because I'm not going to get up in the middle of the night and prick my finger. That's just not what people do. But that was really enlightening. And the best part about it is now that I figured out that this was a problem for me specifically, I can now do something about it. And I can figure out if I am hungry, what foods can I eat before bed? And I try not to eat before bed, but if I'm hung, sometimes it happens and sometimes I gotta eat before bed. If I have to go, to, uh, if I have to eat something and go to bed, I can eat uh, proteins, fats, and fibers like uh, eggs or 
uh, even a handful of nuts uh, won't spike my blood sugar through the night like these carbohydrates will. So I've adjusted my diet uh, with that in mind. No carbohydrates late at night before bed. And that's been a game changer for me. It really, really saves me from being in that red zone for long periods of time like I was doing for much of my life that I was unaware of. So it really takes the guesswork out of um, managing your blood sugar and it'll tell you which foods are problematic for you and which ones aren't. Let's get into some more questions. Okay. Do you show results after exercising? A exercising after eating is always a good thing for your blood sugar. Absolutely. Um, and I'm gonna be doing more of this. I'm gonna be doing some cardio tests but I have a couple of um, videos on my page about walk, there's one for walking after, after eating. And what I did was I took uh, 39 grams of sugar, mixed it in a glass of water. I did a, I did a, um, a benchmark on that, did the blood sugar spike. The next day I took the same amount of sugar in water. And after I drank it, I went for a walk. I think I went for a half hour walk and the results were dramatic. It really brought down that glucose levels. See, what's happening is your body is actually using that glucose instead of putting it into your bloodstream and it's not doing anything and it's trying, it's stored uh, because the insulin is putting it into your cells. So exercise is definitely one of the best things that you can do to bring down a blood sugar spike. So walking after eating is a really, really good practice for anybody to do. If you, if you do walk every day and you're trying to figure out what the best time to walk is, I would say walk after your biggest meal that has the most amount of carbohydrates. That'll really help you uh, to keep your blood sugar in check. Okay, let's see what else. Let's see what we got here. Okay, can you please talk about your experience or any with intermittent fasting and blood sugar uh, like eating one meal a day and fasting till the next day. Really, really good. I like intermittent fasting and I try to do 16 hours every day. And I find that when I do that, I have more energy and uh, I, am, I can think more clearly. I really like it. There's a lot of scientific information on um, the benefits of intermittent fasting. So a lot of people are doing it because it's really easy to do. There's nothing you really have to do other than restrict your, the, the window in which you eat your food every day. So I eat only within an eight hour period and then I stop usually eating at around six o'clock at night and then I don't eat until noon the next day. So uh, for me, it's really easy to do and I recommend that if people wanna try it, first, if you have any medical conditions, uh, talk to your doctor before you do it just to make sure there's nothing uh, that's gonna cause any problems. But Instead of jumping into a 16 hour fast every day right away, here's what I did and it really worked well for me. I started, I think my average uh, fasting um, from, the last, from my last meal until I woke up in the morning and had breakfast, I think it was around 12 or 13 hours. And that was my regular baseline for, for um, not eating. And what I did was I added one hour every month to that. So I think I started at 12 or 13. I went to 14 hours for the first month, not eating anything for 14 hours, then 15 the next month, and then 16. And easing into it was really, really, I think the key for me to be able to stick with it. If I tried to go 16 hours straight in, it's difficult and the food cravings might get you. I've gone as high as, uh, I've, done, I've done three uh, three day fasts. I've done three of those already and those are tougher to do but the benefits apparently are really really good there's all kinds of benefits with regard to autophagy and all that stuff so if you haven't tried intermittent fasting and you want to improve your metabolic health there's a lot of data out there that suggests that it is helpful uh, but like i said ease into it and if you do have any conditions talk to your doctor before you start it Is it possible to get type two diabetes at age 20? Yeah, statistically, there's all kinds of people that are getting uh, type two diabetes at younger and younger ages, every year after year, uh, people are getting younger and younger are getting these metabolic conditions like type two diabetes. And I really think it has to do with the modern diet. All of this highly processed foods, 
are really causing a lot of problems with people. Um, and here's a, big, here's a big reason why. They're highly addictive. These foods are designed by these corporations to taste really good and they're designed to get you to buy more of them. So they're, they spend a lot of research and they put a lot of science into making these foods taste great so you can't resist them. They're hyper palatable and it's hard to resist them. I would say I'm addicted to sugar. I've been eating sugar my whole life and it's been a struggle to get off it sometimes. But I found there are ways that can help you to get off the sugar. But if you're raised on sugar as you're a child, I think your, your palate is developed from zero to six years old. So if you've had sugar when you're very, very young, chances are you're gonna be a sugar. Um, you're gonna like sugar for the rest of your life. And I, I, I don't know if I had a lot of sugar when I was that young, but I do like it. And it is really, really, carbohydrates in general, like cookies and cakes and pasta and breads and stuff like that are just so delicious, they're hard to get away from. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, please follow up with another Big Mac for eating using apple cider vinegar or berberine. Yeah, I gotta say, out of all the, um, and I've tried a ton of different, I get a lot of people that send me, a lot of companies that send me supplements. And out of all the ones that I've tried, uh, berberine and apple cider vinegar, but apple cider vinegar is, for me, the best bang for your buck. It's cheap, you can buy a bottle of apple cider vinegar for five or 10 bucks, and that will last you months. You can take one to two tablespoons with a glass of water, just put it in the glass of water and drink that before you're gonna have a meal, and that'll help to minimize the blood sugar spike. But keep in mind, that doesn't give you a license to eat as many carbohydrates or like pig out on junk food. It's gonna help you reduce the blood sugar spike by up to 30%, but it doesn't mean that you can eat as much as you want. It's gonna help out, and it's a good way to help out. It's a really fast, cheap, easy way to do it, but you still have to watch the carbs. So it's not, uh, it's not a cure-all. Uh, but there are, there are a lot of supplements out there that do well for that. Um, I think the best thing that you can do, there are, there are several things that you can do that I'm, that I'm doing and trying to adopt these as, a, as daily habits. Number one is to cut down on the refined carbohydrates and the processed foods. Uh, those are causing a lot of problems for me and there's a lot of uh, data out there that says, you know, eating these refined carbohydrates by themselves without balancing those meals with good quality proteins, fats and fiber uh, will really skyrocket your blood sugar. So cut down on those refined products and increase your whole food consumption. So, um, you know, uh, a steak or whole meats are better than packaged meats that have been processed with nitrates and all of these different things to help to, to increase their shelf life. Cut back on those processed foods, increase the, the uh, whole foods. And particularly, uh, there are a lot of studies out there that suggest that vegetables that are above ground vegetables are really, really good for you. You wanna increase the fiber content Vegetables are rich in vitamins and minerals that your body needs to function properly as well too. So increase your above ground vegetables. Stay away from the root vegetables if you're trying to watch your blood sugar like potatoes and things like that. There are a few exceptions to that rule, but generally speaking, uh, the root vegetables are high in starch and they can spike your blood sugar as well too. I think that's pretty common knowledge. But here's what is really good news is that cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous vegetables are like broccoli, cauliflower, um, arugula, I love arugula salad, um, uh, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, things like that. They're really, really high in fiber and they are nutrient dense vegetables as well too. And they have a really good effect on your blood sugar, both in the short term and in the long term. So increase your consumption of cruciferous vegetables if you can, that's another one. Um, and also start walking. If you don't do physical activity, 
Exercise is one of the best things that you can do for your health, especially your metabolic health. And um, there's so much information on that and it's just common sense. We've got to stop being so sedentary and stop laying around after you eat. Go for a walk. If you don't exercise already, walking has tremendous benefits, especially after you've eaten a meal. You don't have to go too hard. Just go for a brisk walk and it'll help to manage your blood sugar levels. So do those three things. And if you need to supplement with stuff like apple cider vinegar, if you know you're going to have like high carbs one day or for a meal, uh, do stuff like that. If you just did those things, you can significantly improve your, your, uh, your blood sugar and your metabolic health. But you have to be consistent. You have to try to adopt these habits so you're doing them every day like you're brushing your teeth. Okay, uh, if I'm going to eat these high carbs, I'm going to reduce the amount that I'm eating. I'm going to increase the proteins good quality fats and, and fiber, and that's gonna fill me up so I don't overdo it on these other you know, junk foods. Go for a walk. Uh, those are really, really great habits to adopt. Can you try sweet potatoes, please? I've done sweet potatoes. Guys, so here's, what goes, here's what's going on with my YouTube channel. So on YouTube, I can only post one minute shorts. And a lot of the stuff that I do, a lot of the content that I do on TikTok and Instagram, Facebook, um, those posts are a little bit longer. Some of them are a minute and a half, some of them are close to two minutes. So I can't post them here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do compilations and post them on, um, on my main page and on face or on YouTube rather. So people can see like a series of things. Like I did one on um, fast food the other day that I posted. You can see I have like about four or five tests that are strung together uh, and you can see that. So not all of my content is on the YouTube shorts and it's because of that time restriction. So, um, but I will be posting this stuff in another format for you guys. I'm vegetarian, would you, what would you suggest is the best protein? Um, beans are really, really good for the blood sugar. Um, things like that, beans, vegetables have proteins. If you're looking for complete proteins, beans are good. Um, combination of beans and other things. You wanna have a lot of variety if you're a vegetarian and try to get as much variety and high protein vegetables or, or, uh, or uh, nuts and seeds, things like that are really good for protein. Um, but uh, if, I think the key to uh, the key to a vegetarian diet is to not go for the junk food as well too. I think the one common denominator here is with all uh, diets that help with your metabolic issues is the key, the common denominator is that you should cut back on the highly processed foods. So if you are a vegetarian, it doesn't mean that uh, cookies are good for you, vegan cookies are good for you, or beer or something like that, which is vegetarian, right? So uh, that's the rule stick to the whole foods and try to minimize those highly processed foods, whatever diet you're choosing. That's the key to it all. And balance it out. If you're, you know, don't have too many potatoes without high, car without high um, fiber vegetables and fats and things like that to help slow down that digestion process. Okay. How often do I eat pizza? Not as often as I used to. I used to love pizza as one of my go-to fast foods, but once I got the CGM, I realized what it was doing to my blood sugar. I spike and I spike for a long time with pizza and that's just how my body reacts to it. Um, and it's not good for me. And there are a lot of people that are sensitive to, the, to white bread and there's a lot of that white bread and gluten in pizza. So I don't eat it, I don't eat it often. For the test that I did, I was doing it several days in a row, but I pay the price for that. I feel it after a couple of days or three days of eating pizza slices in a row like that. At the end of it, I say, okay, I gotta stop these tests for now because uh, I can really feel it. I start to get tired again. I start to get those old symptoms that I had when before I started this journey of trying to clean up my act here. So I don't eat it, I don't eat it much anymore. Are you type two? No, I am not type two diabetic. I am, I, I have a history of type two diabetes in my family and it's pretty strong. There's a lot of aunts and uncles. My mom has it and I've seen what it can do to people. And I'm getting on in age now, I'm 52 and I was starting to get symptoms of insulin resistance. And I said, 
I want to take matters into my hands here and I want to try and prevent this from happening. So I got the CGM and started doing that. But it's important to note that the same uh, principles of food with food, the, with the food that you eat, apply to type 2 diabetics as well. So if I'm trying to minimize a blood sugar spike, that's exactly what diabetes, di type 2 diabetics are trying to do as well too. They want to keep their, their blood sugar at a, at a, within an acceptable range. When your blood sugar is high, it wreaks havoc on your system and it can cause all kinds of problems if your blood sugar goes unchecked for too long, heart attack, um, all kinds of different things, Alzheimer's, stroke, uh, certain cancers are increased. Your, your risk of dying with type 2 diabetes is really uh, increased considerably. So I don't want that. I don't think anybody wants to get type 2 diabetes. And with, with what I've seen, um, and hereditary factors are involved with that as well too. That's why I'm doing something about it because it's, it's in my family. But uh, from what I've seen and from what I've heard from a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people I don't know if they're reversing their type 2 diabetes, but it's gone into remission. They're able to get off of their medications, their lifestyle improves, they lose weight. So I believe that this epidemic of type 2 diabetes is really caused by all the junk food and the sedentary lifestyle. So if you can turn those around, or you don't have to like stop them entirely, I think that's unrealistic. I think what you can do is slowly wean off all this processed foods and introduce these whole foods in that are healthy for you. Start to pick up activities that you like to do. If you like to go for walks in the woods or something, do more off, do that more often. If you like to dance, dance. If you like to do boxing, whatever it is, adopt some kind of a movement strategy so you can move every day and wean yourself off of the processed foods. And you can really get great benefits from that as well. Also, another one is to make sure you get enough sleep, good quality sleep. That has a huge impact on your, on your hormones as well too. And I know that for myself, when I don't get enough sleep, and that's one of the problems I do have, sometimes I only get four hours sleep a night and it's not enough. And what I found with that is that um, my blood sugar levels the next day are, are higher. My baseline blood sugar level, my fasting blood sugar level is higher. And also when I do eat carbohydrates, I'm much more sensitive to them and I get bigger spikes when I don't get enough sleep. So there's a lot going on with that. So you can reduce it if you alter your lifestyle. You can bring yourself back um, with diet. Most people can, I think. I, I don't think there's a, that's, a, that's an absolute statement, but from what I've seen and from the experts that I've talked to, um, you can do a lot to get a grip on your metabolic health. The problem is we're up against this food industry that makes things so tasty. They're really, really hard to say no to, and they're convenient. Let's say, for example, you want to eat uh, a chocolate bar. That's about 300 calories. If you were to eat 300 calories of broccoli, you'd have a huge plate of broccoli in front of you. You've got to go to the grocery store, buy that broccoli, come home and prepare it. And it, it <laughs> you have to be pretty good at making broccoli taste good. Um, it's not like a chocolate bar where you get that instant gratification. You can wolf down 300 calories worth of a chocolate bar in 20 seconds. And for you to eat that broccoli, you've got to chew through all that fiber and it's not going to be as pleasant for you. So that's what we're up against. We're up against highly convenient, inexpensive foods that taste great and they're easy to eat. We're, our, we are designed to conserve energy for survival. So eating 300 calories in a chocolate bar with minim minimal effort and a high reward, a high flavor reward, and you put that up against broccoli, 300 calories worth of broccoli is a whole big plate of broccoli and it doesn't taste great. It's difficult and it takes energy to eat that. So that's what we're up against. So we need to find the foods that we do like that are whole foods and we need to start reducing the other foods that are junky. Uh, turning your phone to the side would help us viewing. Yeah, I don't know how to do that with this. I, I think I started on this, so if I turn it to the side now, it'll go wonky, but uh, I'll, I'll take a note of that later. I might do these lives on my computer the next time. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna jump off now. I've got some other things to do, but I just wanted to answer a few questions. And I get a lot of questions about the glucose monitor that I use. I do wanna mention as well, too, that the one that I use, the Cygnos one, 
they're running an end of summer sale and they're offering 20% off to my viewers or followers. There's, there's a link on my page, you can see that if you are interested in, and the deal ends tonight. So if you wanna take advantage of it, now's a good time to do it. Uh, it is expensive for a lot of people. And I, I always say this, if you're concerned about your blood sugar, uh, if you have type two diabetes or you're pre-diabetic or you have a history of type two diabetes in your family, or you just wanna optimize your health, feel better, have more energy and get more things done through the day with that increased energy and mental focus, you should really be having a look at your blood sugar, especially if you have a sweet tooth. And I say, get any CGM that you can. You don't have to get this one, but get whatever one you can, at least for one month. I think the minimum amount you can get it is for one month. You get a one month subscription to it. And during that month, you're gonna find out which foods are problematic for your blood sugar and which foods you can tolerate more. And then from that list, you're gonna be able to say, which one of these foods do I wanna keep or which of these foods do I want to keep in my house? So I will, I'll keep them on hand so I can eat them when I get hungry and not be tempted by all the other junk food. That's one great thing that you're going to find out about it. And you can take that information with you into your future and it'll help you tremendously to get a handle on your metabolic health. But you'll also find other things as well too, like what happens when you don't get enough sleep or you're stressed out, what it's doing to your blood sugar. And like I learned with my CGM is that I shouldn't be eating carbs late at night when I do my blood sugar spikes all night and that is not a good state to be in. So get whatever CGM you can if you're concerned about your blood sugar or you wanna optimize your health. And if you can't afford it for too long, get it for a month. And that information is so valuable I look at it as an investment in your future and your health. So find out what, what's going on with your blood sugar and that information will give you the opportunity to actually doing, to do something about it without having to guess at it. So again, there's a link in my bio for the 20% discount. That sale ends tonight if you're interested. Um, I'll be back doing these tests more and more. I'm up next is a lot, I'm getting one of these, um, I'm getting one of these, uh, heart rate monitors that I put here to do exercise. And I'm gonna test the different cardio zones to see how that affects your blood sugar. I know that walking is tremendous for reducing blood sugar spikes. So if you're not already walking after a meal, it's a really good thing to do. Thank you everybody for watching and thank you all for your support as well too. I get a tremendous amount of uh, good support on the in the comments and I'm really grateful for that. That really fuels me to keep doing these tests. So uh, have a good night everybody and we'll talk soon.